Hi and welcome to a quick video about one of the quirks of the Faxstation 3100 and how it affects your licensing and how to get around it. Now the Vaxstation 3100 is generally meant to have a large CRT monitor connected and keyboard and mouse and all that sort of stuff because it's a workstation. Now a lot of the ones that available these days come without the monitor and just the base unit so there's a little switch on the back that you can do that puts the console onto the serial port on the back rather than through the monitor. Here's the switch here, it's a little push button and you just push it in and it clicks into the um, mode where it can use the external console and the console plugs into this printer port here so OPA0 will appear on this port once that's pushed in. I have seen some cases where um, this hole doesn't exist, but the switch is still there on the board, so you can open it up from the inside and sort of push the button, even if you don't have that hole in the outside case. Okay, so now we're running VMS. If we look at the licensing, you'll see that what has happened is that it's changed to a VAC server 3100 instead of a VAC station 3100. Now the trouble with this is, is that if you've got licenses for a VAC station, which will be like type D for, for VMS, um, that won't work anymore. Because it's a VAC server, it wants a type D license for the server and your license won't work. So just pushing that switch in the back to change the console means you've broken your type D license. Now I've worked out a way around this and that involves changing this model type number so that it goes back to being a VAC station. So what I've got is this bit of code which is in macro which basically just gets the location of the data structure in memory and there's a certain offset and then it plonks this value into that register and then goes into kernel mode and sets that. Now there's another program I've got show CPU model which will list all the different models of VAXs and If we look here, 60, which is what it's reporting, is a VAX server 3100. And originally it was a 58, VAX station 3100, or it could be a 59 for that matter. So the 60 is wrong, and it needs to be a 58. So what we would do is... Edit this file, stick 58 in there, which is already there, and then we compile that, or assemble it, then we link it, have an exe. So we can copy that to put that in there. Now what you've got to do is you have to run that code very early on. Um, if I run it now and then have a look at the licensing again, it is still not recognised because the licensing's already started. So what you do is you put that fairly early on the boot. So what I usually do is stick it into Psylogicals, which is the first one of the 
customizable um, startup procedures that are run. And then I'll put in here to run the code. And then I'll do a reboot. Okay, so if we look at what the licensing requires now, you can see that type D is back for the workstation licensing, and the server one is no longer permitted. So we can now use the workstation licenses that the machine came with, or maybe came with, um, with that uh, console switch pushed in, even though it still says VAC server 3100 there, but it says model type is 58 there, which is the important bit. Um, if you have type A licenses, you can change that to 57 and get into it, and that'll set it to a micro VAC 3100, which means that you can use type A licenses. But generally, you know, if, you, if the licenses have come with your, your VAC station, then you'll have type Ds and once you run this piece of code, you can then start using those licenses again. Anyway, I hope you found that of use, and we shall catch up with you next time.